Hey everybody, today we're going to do 6.4. We're going to be adding and subtracting expressions, rational expressions. So I want to remind you uh, what rational numbers look like, which are fractions, right? And when we add and subtract fractions, what do we need? We need a common denominator. And now, lots of times people might uh, attack this by saying, okay, what's the least common multiple for that denominator? But the truth is what's going to actually work for us today is we are going to, <clears throat> excuse me, um, <clears throat> look at just multiplying both by uh, the same denominator and then reducing if we can, okay? So like on this one here, actually my ace color is so we know what we're um, doing. So for this one, I'm going to multiply by 15, this one. I'm going to multiply by 6. But whatever we do to the bottom, we must also do to the top. Because as you can see, 6 over 6 is the value of 1. And when we multiply anything by 1, it's itself. So we're not changing it. Okay? We are changing it. We're changing how it looks, but we're not changing the actual value. Okay? Like 2 fourths is the same thing as 1 half. It's the same value. It just looks different. All right, so when I do this, I'm going to rewrite this. 15 times 1 is 15. Okay, 15 times 6. 15 times 6 is 90. Plus 6 times 2 is 12. And we already did 15 times 6 is 90. Now that we have two common denominators, now we can add the top. So 15 plus 12 is 27 over 90. And now we're going to see if there's anything we can cancel out, okay? So what goes into both 27 and 90? And if you can't see it, start low if you need to. But I see a 9. 9 goes into 27 three times. And 9 goes into 90 ten times. If you can see the three goes into 27 and 90, you could do three and then do number three after that. It's okay, you don't have to do it all at once. And there we go, we just simplified it and added these fractions. So of course, you're probably thinking, Miss Heckman, we did this in grammar school, why would we be doing it again? Well, we are doing it with rational expressions. So of course, guys, we have variables involved. Now we're going to do the same concept when it comes to this, okay? So, here I have an um, example for you. So what I'm going to do is explain each step, okay? So here we have a subtraction. We need a common denominator. So I'm going to say need common denominator and to find the common denominator what we're actually going to do is factor first factor okay so as you can see right here the x plus 2 stays the same but 3x plus 6, we have a GFC. We have a greatest common factor. So we're going to take out that 3. Okay. Um, now, now we ask ourselves, okay, what do we already have in common? What we already have in common is this x plus 2. Since they're already in common, the only thing we're missing is that 3. And as you can see, all I have to do then is put a 3 there. And now our denominators are in the same. Do you guys see that? Okay, but we know just from like above, whatever we do in the bottom, we must do to the top. So, um, to multiply by missing. part of common 
denominator. Now, um, <clears throat> so we're missing a three here. So what we need to do is multiply this by three and whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. So multiply that out, we get nine. This stays the same because we weren't missing anything. And as you can see, we have that common denominator now. So since we have the common denominator, now we perform operation. And in this case, we are going to subtract. Now, this example here is an e kind of easy subtraction, okay? In the future, when we do another subtraction, there's going to be something you really want to keep in mind. I won't say it yet until we get to that example. So, of course, common denominator, and what do we do? 9 minus 2 is 7 over that common denominator. Check if there's anything to reduce. If not, we're all set. So, of course, they did at the very end. They said, okay, so um, this rational minus this rational, of course, is this rational. They just had a statement at the very end. Okay, so here we go. Ready? A. First thing we need is to factor anything to make a common denominator. As you see, four, 3, 4, 7x, and 7x, nothing to factor. So I'm going to highlight what they have in common on the denominator. And what do you know? They already have a common denominator, which is awesome in this case, right? Because that means we can go straight to performing the operation, which is addition. So 3 plus 4 is 7 all over the common denominator of 7x. The difference between this question and the question before, other than already having a common denominator, is at the very end, do you see what we can do with this? We can actually reduce it more. What does the top and bottom have in common? They have a seven. So it's almost like I can divide. Seven divided by seven is one. Now, one mistake that a lot of people make, guys, is where's that x right now? That x is on the bottom, so it stays on the bottom. And we wouldn't put a zero on top, we would put a one on top, okay? So make sure that final step there, you see if you can reduce anything. All right, remember how I told you that subtraction is gonna be really tricky? Okay, this is why. If you see in B again, we have a common denominator, right? One of those denominators does not have anything extra. They are common. Also remember from the last um, section, you cannot cross out an x over x. Remember, these are groups. So you cannot um, eliminate and parts of them. Okay, common denominator. So this is what I recommend. When you just have numbers up here, we can perform that operation very easily. But when you have uh, binomials, two terms, um, you need to be careful. So yes, it's a common denominator, so I'm going to keep that common denominator right there. But what I might do is actually rewrite the numerator before I combine like terms, okay? So the first one, of course, stays the same. I have this x minus 3. Remember, I put those parentheses. Now I'm subtracting, and again, what did I have here? I had parentheses. I'm subtracting that other part of the numerator. And if you take this step, what do you guys notice? I notice that I'm gonna be distributing that subtraction sign out. And if we didn't put the parentheses there, we would have made that mistake, okay? So when you have the binomials, put parentheses around it. We'll save you. Now, let me do this so it's gonna be a little bit more simplifying. So now, if I distribute that, do I need the parentheses? No, I don't because I'm going to combine like terms. So x minus 3, now we have a minus 7 plus x all over x minus 5. I'm going to put this still in parentheses, though, just to remind myself not to separate the two. 
and I'm going to combine like terms. x plus x is 2x. And negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10. Okay. We are not done. Do you guys see what else we can do with this? What can we factor out on the numerator? We can factor out a 2. This is 2 times x minus 5. All over x minus 5. Ooh, you see why we had to factor that out? Because now we can cross our x minus 5 out, and our answer is 2. Who would have thought that these two rational expressions subtracted together would just be 2? Okay, so yeah, there's a lot of steps here, guys. Take your time. This is why we're doing this for a couple days. All right, next one. Hey, luckily for us, right, we still get common denominators. We don't have to work yet. <laughs> okay, now, because this is subtraction, we want to watch out. But since this is a number and not a binomial, do we need parentheses around it? No, we don't. But if we look, we would have x squared minus 4 on top all over that common denominator. But what did we run into the last question? We had to keep going to see if we could simplify it any. Well, on top, we know that this is the difference of squares. We had some practice with that last section. So I am going to factor out that difference of squares to x plus 2 times x minus 2. And if you need help with that, don't forget, the rules are on your last um, notes, which is 6.3, and it shows you those difference of squares. Now, why do we do this? Well, what do you know? Because now I can cross out the x plus 2s, and our final answer is just x minus 2. Okay? All right, D. As you can see here, we're now getting into a little bit more complex, okay? So, I see that, remember, the first thing was to do the last, this example that we did here, right, on the first page. The first thing I needed to do was factor out anything for the common denominator. All right, so, one over, well, x plus four cannot be factored out anymore plus a over, and if we see in this denominator, this is again the difference of squares. So I have an x plus 4 and an x minus 4. All right, I'm using my highlighter. You guys can use whatever you need. I'm going to highlight what they already have in common. They already have an x plus 4. So as you can see, in this denominator, it has an extra x minus 4. So what do we need to do? We need to multiply this side by an x minus 4. Now they look the same, right? But whatever we do in the bottom, we must do to the top. Now, I understand that we're multiplying this by 1, and anything times one is itself, but I'm going to take this just a step further so you guys can see if it wasn't one what we would do. Okay, so I am going to put this all together. So one times x minus four plus eight all over that common denominator of x plus four times x minus four. Now, I'm doing this for two reasons. One, if this wasn't one, we would distribute it out. Two, people make this mistake right now. They want to cross out in the middle of the problem. That is not right. You have to combine like terms before you cross out. I'm going to repeat that. Combine like terms before you cross out. So if this were other than one, I would distribute, right? But really, I can think of this as x 
minus four plus eight. So I'm going to combine like terms first. X minus, X we can't combine with anything. Minus four plus eight. Well, that would give me X plus four. Now that's together, right? And then on the common denominator, we have an X plus four times an X minus four. And what do you know? What can we cross out? The X plus fours. Now again, like we did at, for A, where's that X minus four? That X minus four is still in the denominator, so keep it still in the denominator. And then what's in the numerator? We wouldn't put zero, we would put the value of one. Okay. Now, you guys, if you want, you can stop right here and try some problems on big ideas. But once you get to one that's a little bit more complicated like this, come back, take some notes. Again, we're doing this for two days, okay? If not, we're just gonna keep going here, okay? All right, let's see if we can factor x plus one, x minus three. Nope, can't factor anything. So let me highlight what they have in common. Remember that these are groups together, so I can't separate them, okay? I can't separate them because they have an adding and subtracting in the middle. All right, what do they have in common? They don't have anything in common. So, what, do I, what does that mean? I need to make it look like each other. So, um, this one over here is missing the x plus one. Now they have something in common. But this one over here is missing the x minus three. Now, do, do they look common? Yep. Don't forget, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. Perfect. Now, I'm gonna rewrite this as a full um, one expression, one rational expression, okay? So, I have this three, times the x minus three. Ooh, look at this one. Minus two times this x plus one. All over the common denominator of this x minus three times x plus one. Now, I give you a note here in, in D, right? In this uh, example, I said, do not cross off before um, combining like terms. So we have to combine like terms first. Do not cross off in the middle of a problem, okay? So my next step here is I'm going to distribute, okay? Distribute, so I get 3x minus nine minus 2x minus two all over that common denominator of x minus three times x plus one. Okay, combine like terms. Well, let's see, x three x minus two x is just x. Uh, negative nine minus two is negative eleven. All over x minus three times x plus one. Now, if there was anything to cross off, we would cross off. As you can see, there's nothing to cross off. So this is our answer. All right, I know that this is long. Remember, two days. So if you wanna stop there, and do some practice, do it. Otherwise, I'm gonna keep going. From that first step, what do we do? We need to factor. So I have an x plus two all over it. Now, those of you need to practice your factoring, practice right now. You can stop the video, factor this trinomial and see if you get it. I'm gonna do it very quickly because I don't wanna focus on the factoring since we should have done this a couple of times ago. So this would be x minus four times x minus one, minus x over, I'm gonna do the same thing here, 
this would be x plus 4 times x minus 1. Okay, so I've got your dose. Now, I'm going to highlight what they have in common already. What they have in common is this x minus 1. Okay, so this one is missing an x plus 4. And this one is missing an x minus 4. Now, do they look common? No, same, same, same. Good. Whatever we did in the bottom, we did in the top. Oh, as you can see, this gets complicated. Wow, does this get long. Math is wonderful, but it still can get complicated. Now, why do I say that? Because we have to do this multiplication out to be able to combine like terms, okay? So I'm gonna show you the next step. I'm gonna bring everything into one uh, rational expression. So I have this x plus four times x plus two. Okay, I have a minus x, minus x times this x minus four all over that common denominator. I know right here, it is so tempting to cross out, but we can't. We have to distribute, combine like terms, do not cross out. Here's the other issue right here. You have to multiply both those binomials, which means you probably, most of you, will be doing the box. You'd be doing x plus 4 times x plus 2, and multiplying that out, okay? So you get x squared, 4x, 2x, and 8. So I'm going to put that all together right here because we're multiplying and combining like terms. So you get x squared plus 6x plus 8. Now I'm going to distribute this x here. So negative x squared plus 4x, because it's a negative x we're distributing, all over that common denominator. Now, combine like terms. What's great is these x squareds cancel, right? This one's positive, one's negative. Um, this becomes a 10x, right? So 10x plus 8 all over x plus 4 times x minus 4, x minus 1. Let's see if we can do any factoring just to see if we can cross out anything. What does 10 and 8 have in common? They have a 2. So I'm going to factor out a 2 to give me a 5x plus 4. And as you can see with that denominator now, there is nothing to cross out. And this is our crazy, messy answer. A lot of work, right? Factor, common denominator, put it together. By putting it together, we had to multiply and distribute, combine like terms, factor out anything we can to see if we can cross out, which in this case we couldn't. Remember, this is why we have a couple of days to do this. All right. Oh, now we have a 3-1? What? Whoever made these notes are terrible. I'm just kidding. This helps us out, okay? First job is to factor, right? So we have 3 over x minus 5 cannot be factored plus 2 over x plus 3 cannot be factored minus 4x minus 1. Remember, this is a group all over. Let me group these. Now this one we can factor. I'm going to factor this out quickly. So that way, again, we're not focusing on the factoring. 
but if you want to pause the video and try it now to see if you got a correct, that'd be a great idea. This would be x minus 5 times x plus 3. All right. Now, this is where my highlighting actually causes me trouble. Because if I highlighted, I really am not highlighting all the way because I need to consider all three, all three denominators, right? And that gets a little tricky. So let's look. This is x minus five. What is in these two denominators that is not in this one? Well, what's in there is an x plus three is not in there. That's in this one and this one. Okay, wow, these two look nice. These are the same, that's awesome. But I need to get this one. So what is this one actually missing? This one's missing the x minus five. Now, do they all have a common denominator? Yes. Okay, whatever we multiply on the bottom, we multiply on the top. So this is missing an x plus three. And this one I have my x minus five. All right, let's rewrite it with a common denominator. So this is gonna be three times x plus three plus two times x minus five minus this, don't forget parentheses here, four x minus one all over the common denominator. And guys, if you switch these in, like I'm gonna put x plus three times x minus five down here. Um, if you put x minus five first, that's fine. Multiplication is commutative, so you can switch them. Now I'm gonna do my distributing. See why I needed to group that? Because I distribute that negative out. So this would be three x plus nine plus 2x minus 10 minus 4x, I'm running out of room, plus 1, all over my common denominator. Okay, combine like terms. So I have a 3x, a 2x, and a negative 4x. That would give me just x. I have a 9, negative 10, that's negative 1, all right? Negative one plus one is zero. And what do you know? Common denominator. And I can't cross anything out because these are groups. I can't just cross an X and an X, okay? And that's our answer. No. All right, now, if you are in secondary three regulars, you are done with your notes. You do not have to go any further. If you would like to go further and learn some honor stuff, you can, but you're not required to. Don't worry about it. If you are in honors, we have one more page to do, okay? All right. So complex fractions. In other words, guys, for honors, again, honors, um, if you have fractions within fractions, we need to learn how to do this algebra. For those of you going into 1050 or calculus, uh, this is very important. It helps you remember like, hey, I can grab all these little concepts and put them together, okay? Now, this here for big ideas will give you two methods. I'm just gonna give you one, okay? So the first thing we want to do is add those fractions in the denominator, which is what we did earlier in this lesson, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I do this group because it's not missing a plus four. Look, this is an x plus four and this is an x. So we have to get them common denominators. This one right here is missing an x plus four. This one's missing an x. Do you see now how they have common denominators? Then whatever we do in the bottom, we do in the top. Okay, I'm going to write this out just as I see it. I wish this wasn't here. Um, five over x plus four over. 
Now I'm going to combine these, okay? I'm gonna kind of do this quicker than what I did earlier in the lesson because this is an honors concept, right? So I'm going to multiply the x times one, which is x. I'm gonna multiply the positive or plus two times this, and I'm gonna distribute that out. That gives us a plus two x plus eight all over that common denominator of x times x plus four, okay? I'm going to combine like terms right in this area. So I get five over x plus four. Now, you know what guys, I'm gonna put parentheses around here just to remember that this is a fraction over another fraction, okay? This will come in handy for our next step. X times X plus four. Now, why do I say that? Because what we learned a long time ago um, is when you multiply or when you divide by a fraction, it is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. And if you remember, the reciprocal flips. So what I'm going to do is change this into a multiplication. So we have this five x five over x plus four, but instead of dividing by this fraction though, I'm going to multiply by the flipping of it, which is x times x plus four all over three x plus eight. And what do you know? Don't forget that's a group. And that's a group. Now we can go back to 6.3 and say, hey, with multiplication, remember if it's the same on the top and the bottom, they cancel out. So our final answer is 5x all over 3x plus 8. Okay. So again, we're going to, if you get complex fractions like this, which you will have a, a two questions on your homework to practice, um, kind of ignore that top, get that common denominator. So we have a fraction over fraction over a fraction, then you're able to change it to a multiplication by multiplying by the reciprocal. Then we can reduce and we're done. All right, we're done with today's lesson.